Whoa, whoa, whoa. Season three of Sunny Family Cult on Crypt TV gets crazy. If you wanna hear all the hidden details about the big connection between Luxie and Sunny Family Cult, then what you're gonna wanna do is watch this whole video from start to finish. This video is sponsored by Crypt TV. Sunny Family Cult is back, and it picks up right where season two left off with Taylor being driven into the desert, which confused me a bit because I always thought they lived in Iowa. There's actually an answer to this question of how they end up in the desert in a now unlisted miniseries called Roger's Vlog, which takes place between season two and season three and can only be found by looking through the playlist section on Crip's channel. Let's check it out. My dad won't stop until he finds me. Oh, I believe that. Absolutely. But luckily, we've got four states in between him and us, so we're farther away from Iowa than he's ever been in his entire life. Which puts them in California. Now Roger's vlog doesn't exactly go up with Casey Neistat levels of consistency, but we do get a little more information in the second, and at the time of making this, final vlog. When I started this cult about 20 years ago, my brother didn't realize its significance. He didn't see that there was a- Casey, you think that you started the Sunny Family cult? People have been talking about Sunny Family for like 30 years, since like the 80s. The town's full of stories. Yes, there was a cult back in the 80s, but it was not the Sunny Family cult that I started. This confirms what I predicted in my last Things You Missed on Sunny Family Cult Seasons 1 and 2, about how Roger's chapter of the cult branches off from the original. So after driving halfway across the country, they end up in a motel in the California desert. But after attempting to escape and getting a couple innocent people chopped up by Roger, Taylor finds herself tied up in the motel room. No more bringing chaos into the world to show people what is really important. It's time to wipe it clean. Start over. Together. So as I mentioned before, Roger's chapter of the cult is the antithesis of Elias' chapter, and many of the flashback scenes here in season 3 show how that divide was formed. This line really spells out exactly how the two values differ. It's mentioned from the very beginning how the purpose of Elias' cult is to introduce chaos and disrupt bonality. We introduce chaos to disrupt the banality of this life. And in season 3 we get to see exactly why those values are adopted. Taylor, of course, being someone who has grown up learning the ways of Elias, is naturally repulsed by Roger's ideas, and has this to say about him. You're a monster. No, I'm not. I need you for that. And that line leads us into the main plot of this season, Roger's conquest to fulfill the ritual from this ancient book he found. We get a little more of that book in episode 2, and it is filled with things you missed. This is the first page that we get a good look at, and a closer inspection reveals that it's all about Luxi. The Latin text Tempus Edax Rerum translates into time, devourer of all things. That of course ties into Luxi's iconic accessory, his stopwatch. There's also a clock present on this page, a sketch of Luxi's hand and mouth, and the act of Luxi taking a body part, in this case the face, from someone who was not able to release. There's also a much deeper possible connection with Luxi that I'll touch back on later in this video. The next page looks to be about Suit, the newest Crypt TV serialization directed by my very talented friend Danny Donahue. There's only one episode of Suit out so far, but the tagline is every cycle must be completed, and the episode seems to compare the cycles of electricity to life cycles. The Latin on the page to the right contains the phrases he began to perish and difficult for those in the highest something. That's where it cuts off. The text also mentions something about selection, and there's an image of a human eye. I'm sure we'll find out more about how all of that ties into the themes of the series very soon. The next page doesn't have any legible text, but it does contain the symbol of the birch the most popular short film on Crypt TV, which will also be serialized in the near future. There's also a page on this cursed statue from another recent Crypt series, Stoneheart. The Latin on the left page says something about a sacred dance, though I can't make out much more than that, and the English on the right reads, For she, the protector, will strike down all that oppose those that would denounce her name, when for the stones the man cast will break the bones of his enemies. She seeks to redress that wrong. Come to her, and she will end all your pain. All your and that's where it cuts off. The next page is a bit more ambiguous, but it shows what appears to be a pony, the main witch from Stoneheart. 
and moreover, this is just a really cool illustration. Moving on, the symbols on the left here are not anything that I'm familiar with, but if anyone has any leads on how to decipher them, please let me know in the comments. I'm sure you're all familiar with the Sunny Family Cult symbol, but what you may have missed is when Roger moves his hand, the shadow of another new creature can be seen very briefly. Before Roger turns the page once again, and this is an important one, because it details the ritual that becomes the centerpiece of everything Roger is aiming for in this season of Sunny Fam. The whole reason Roger kidnaps Taylor is because he believes she's the one who can help him unlock this hidden power. She is the girl of 17 with violence etched into her soul, with dark hair and dark eyes pictured at the center here in this book. And these monsters drawn above, a pony, Mordio, and Luxi, all existing crypt creatures, are examples of what kind of monsters might be created from carrying out this ritual. The diagram outlines five sacrifices and the caption calls for a blood sacrifice of four victims and the fifth will become something. The other side details what I can only imagine is the transformation process from man to monster. So after taking all of these pages in, Roger looks up to see a vision of this girl. This shot is very reminiscent from an image from one of the lesser known Crips short films, The Woman in the Book, where not much background is given about the story, but a similar looking creepy lady seems to be summoned from a book in that short as well. Mr. Sandman also features a similar book, so the idea of crypt lore being hidden in ancient texts has been established even before Sunny Family Cult. Now at this point, at the end of the second episode of season three, you could chalk up all of these references to other crypt properties to be nothing more than fun easter eggs. But going forward in episode three, it becomes very clear that all of these worlds are destined to collide in Sunny Family Cult. If you're enjoying the video so far, you've probably noticed this stylish attire. If you want to be part of the Sunny Fam, you've got to have this merch. And there's only one way to get it. All you have to do is sign up for the Crypt newsletter using the link in the description and you'll be in the know about their exclusive monthly merch drops. Now back to things you missed. Remember back in season two when Taylor and Jaina are being chased by the masked Roger and Taylor asked Jaina if she can see him too, basically suggesting that she's been having hallucinations? You can see it too? What if those visions tie into Taylor's status as the chosen girl in the prophecy of Roger's book? The third episode begins with a pair of hands that should be familiar to anyone who's seen Luxy, attacking Taylor in her sleep. She wakes up back in her room, where she sees yet another monster rise up before her. Based on the shadow on the wall, it looks like a pony, but this is also just a dream. As this episode progresses, it becomes more and more clear that these are more than just references. Sunny Family Cult is the epicenter of a Crypt TV cinematic universe, including all of their monster properties. The hashtag monster within is more than just a catchy tagline. In this crypt universe, there's a monster within all of us waiting to be unleashed by this ancient ritual. Roger's buying into all of it. He's gone and got a tattoo with the Sunny Family Cult logo at the center, the cursed statue from Stoneheart, Luxy, suit, and the stick symbol from the birch. All of these icons have risen up from the girl making the final sacrifice. As Roger tries to convince Taylor to take part, he tells her the following. We can do this together. We can wipe away what we hate in this world. This is an interesting take because Roger believes he's the good guy, and in the end, he might be. Luxy, Mordio, Apony, the Birch, all of their victims tend to be criminals, bad people, or people with dangerous flaws. If that's what you call a monster, then yes, we will turn ourselves into monsters. Taylor, of course, thinks this is insane and gets the heck out of there, taking refuge in the motel manager's office. Unfortunately for her, Roger has been there already. For those of you keeping count at home, I know at least one of you is, that's three kills at the motel. Taylor uses his fingerprint to unlock his phone and call her dad, who by the way has a North Carolina area code. I guess what Roger said about him never having ventured this far from Iowa is still true. That is, until episode four, the season finale. It is at this point that we finally see the face of the girl from Roger's visions, and it looks exactly like Taylor. A rush of images flash on screen very quickly. Luxy, the cursed statue from Stoneheart, troubled youth, suit, Mordio, a pony, the famous monster from the Birch. Taylor's dad showing up ends up working in Roger's favor because he unknowingly becomes the fourth sacrifice at the motel. It is as it is written in the book. Four blood sacrifices and the fifth will become something. Taylor's anger gets the better of her and she gives Roger exactly what he wants, making him the fifth sacrifice and ending the season on his revival.
I'm excited to see whatever monster Roger becomes in the next season because whatever it is, it really becomes the biggest boss in all of Crypt TV canon. The bad guy that presides over all other bad guys on the Crypt channel. The one that brings each series together into one. This is a really exciting time to be a follower of the Sunny Family Cult and the Crypt channel in general. There are series within the cinematic universe airing right now and you don't want to miss out. So make sure you subscribe to Crypt TV for scary episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I'll see you in the next one, assuming we both survive.